Hey guys, in this tutorial I wanna show you guys how to make pixel art using Procreate. This is something that I wanted to do for a really long time because I love pixel art, it's super fun to do and after I learned this technique I just wanted to share it because I want you all guys to like be able to do the same type of art without going through this hassle because I honestly tried to do this before it was until recently that I figured out this trick how to make pixels be sharp and I'm gonna walk you through all of these features. And just as a disclaimer, this animation, the, the pixel art of this piece has been done in Procreate, but I chose to do the animation part in Pixaki. But I just recently learned a way that you can do the animation part also in Procreate. And I'm gonna show you both ways so you can make your own mind on what app you want to use, because both of these have workflows that take some time in certain aspects and it just depends on how you want to divide your time. Without further ado, let's get to the meat of this tutorial because there's a lot to cover and I hope to explain all of these technical terms for you so that you can make your own pieces as soon as possible. So the most important thing about creating pixel art on Procreate is first creating a brush that can only do one pixel at a time, like this. And the problem I had earlier with this one pixel brush is the fact that it also creates all of these irregular shapes also. But we are gonna get past this problem later, but first we are going to need to have this brush that can create this one pixel. So first, Make sure that your canvas size is only one pixel. We're gonna resample canvas and do just one pixel. And hit done. And now we're gonna need one screen of white. Make sure that you pick completely white color and then just fill the canvas with that. Now since the brush that I have is only one pixel, I only need to tap it once on the screen. And that has already filled this canvas with white. Next we are gonna select the canvas and then copy it. Now on the clipboard we have one pixel of white. What we're gonna use this for is for the shape of this brush. So we are gonna go to the shape tab of the brush studio and then hit edit and then import and paste. Now since it was already white nothing happens here but now you have one pixel of white as the stamp of this brush and then hit done. Always remember to save your edits when you are editing a brush. Now, after we have completely white shape image, make sure that the grain source is also completely white. We're gonna do the same thing. Go and paste, and that's gonna paste the white pixel from your clipboard and hit done. Now, I'm gonna show you every single one of these tabs so that you can make sure that you have turned down all the settings for the brush that affect the scale. And to make sure that you have the same, you don't need to download anything, but you can double check your brush settings by just copying what I have here. And just as a small tip, you can make sure that the touch taper is completely off by sliding these to the sides. So all of these settings are turned off completely to the zero. Here's my grain, it doesn't have any movement. Flow is at maximum. No settings in here. Make sure that the color dynamics are completely off. And here, everything is at zero. And especially here with Apple Pencil, make sure that there is no size scale settings to any of these. And then when you are sure that you have all of these settings turned off, hit done. And now you have your one pixel brush. For this next part, we're gonna make a new canvas and I'm gonna set the pixel resolution to 160 and 144 because that's the resolution of Game Boy and Game Boy Color. And I'm gonna hit create and this is gonna create a new canvas. And now when we use this one pixel brush, you can see that sometimes it creates these much bigger blocks than one pixel and we're gonna fix this and this next part I learned from Georgie so thank you incredibly much without you this whole tutorial wouldn't exist so we're gonna go into canvas 
and then to drawing guide and you can see that the drawing guide is huge. So we're gonna edit drawing guide and then when you see here one pixel, if it doesn't say pixels but centimeters or something else here, you can just click this tab and set it to pixels and then we're gonna hit one. So now the grid is exactly one pixel wide and the most important thing to notice here is that it should align to the edge of the canvas. So that's why we made a new canvas for this purpose. If you resize and then use a guide, it might not be aligned to the edge of the canvas. So now that we see that it's aligned to the edge, we're gonna hit done. And because this is green and we're gonna do painting on it, I'm gonna set the color of the drawing guide to black so that the saturation of it doesn't bother me. And if you look this from far away, now it looks optically like it's this sort of like gray mess. So I don't want to have that bothering me when I'm making color choices. So I'm gonna set it as small as possible so that I can still see it. Let's say about 15 and then opacity really low. So this is gonna be a really thin grid. And I'm gonna hit assisted drawing on, but this is something that you can toggle on and off later. And now I'm gonna hit done. And now we have one pixel grid. And if we go here, we see that all of these brush strokes are aligned to the grid already. It's just now we understand how it works. And this is something that you need to know about this brush that you just created. So you see that there are grid squares here. One, two, three, four. If I press this one pixel brush to the middle, it will fill all of the squares. But if I hit a square in the middle of it, that will create one pixel brush stamp. And that's how you create pixel art in Procreate. Isn't, I, I'm so excited. <laughs> like This is the coolest thing ever. And now that we have this grid here, we don't need to align things by hand, we can just trust that the grid will hold the line. And that's how you can create really easily quick shapes. So let's go through some basic concepts for creating pixel art. One of the features that you will probably use a lot when you are doing pixel art on Procreate is the paint bucket tool. And here, remember that it's important to adjust the tolerance of the paint bucket tool. So you see that now it's at 97.6%. So I'm gonna still keep holding on to this pen on the screen and then just slide it all the way to the left. And you see that the screen is ending here right now. So I'm gonna undo this action, but Procreate will remember that setting. So once I drop it here again, I'm gonna slide it all the way to the left. So this ensures that I can now do a paint bucket action that has tolerance of zero and it will only fill that area's pixels. And you can keep it there so you won't have to be afraid of like unintentionally coloring other pixels. Another quick tip that I definitely used many times in creation of this piece is this selection trick. So if you create a selection and you want to move the piece let's say to the left. So I'm gonna hit copy and then paste. Now that I have it, this dog here and I want to move it to the left a little bit, one thing that you can use if you want to make precise changes is just tapping to the direction that you want to go. So one tap moves one pixel. And this is incredibly helpful when you want to make precise changes to your pixel art. And now we're gonna do a really quick process of how I created this piece. I first started in black and white because I just wanted to block in what I wanted to do. Besides, I honestly thought that I was going to do a black and white pixel art piece. Then when I started adding the colors, I slowly started to see the mood appear here. The good thing about working with Procade as opposed to Pixaki is that you can use all of these layer styles, like for example, additive format, 
so that I could color pick this sort of like brighter colors to kind of simulate the look of these neon lights and have shadows that would tint the other colors. So for that I used that really low saturation overlay layer and then I just color picked that to have the final shadow look to the image. And a lot of these elements were inspired by my trip to Japan and those bar back alleys that have a lot of boxes and stuff in them and there's just a lot of visual noise in a small dense space and I thought that that looks really inspiring to me and I wanted to have some of that look and that's why I chose the piece of this shop to be Kumano Shoppu as well because I think it's located somewhere in Japan. When animating this piece, I just honestly tried to get the most difficult animation done first. Because for me animation is really hard. So I created this moving tail of the dog first. And I created one round of that. And then I just copied the frames back to back. So that I could have two loops of that. And within that time frame, I would have more time to do these other small subtle animations. And with all of these things, my main concern was to create animation that is small enough so that it doesn't look too jarring when it's just looping. Because my whole intention is to create this sort of like chill vibe that can just loop. And when I have enough animation, they kind of like inform me where I need more animation. When I created this bear piece, I also was very aware of like what parts are moving on what location of the screen. So I tried to have kind of balanced movement because there's not supposed to be one type of movement that gathers all the attention. So there's always something going on at all corners of the screen. So that's my main driver for deciding what parts to animate and how active those animations should be. Now, when it comes to animation, I have decided to use an application called Pixaki. Now let's talk about animation. I have animated this piece in Pixaki. And the reason is that when I export from Pixaki by hitting the export button, I can use this magnification that will automatically scale up the image to a huge scale. And I'm gonna show you later how you can keep the crispiness of the pixel art when expanding it in Procreate. But if you are using Pixaki, I just wanted to show you what I did because this tool also has its drawbacks. So I think it's important to be aware of them if you use this for animation. So at this point I opened Pixaki and in Pixaki I made a new canvas with the same resolution and then I go to edit and then I hit the selection box and then I hit paste and then hitting this tick will place it as its own layer and now this is like one frame. For this animation I have also done huge mistakes with the previous piece of this that took a lot of time in the end. So to avoid that, I would recommend doing this, that when you do your first frame, first do more layers. 
it doesn't really even matter if you have extra layers that you don't end up using at all. Just giving yourself some options is a good idea. And here I also made some layers that have opacity turned down. So that's 61, this is 35, and maybe one that is just around 20. I don't think there's any point in creating layers that have less opacity because then you don't even see those changes. And the reason why I created all of these extra layers, and now I'm selecting the lowest layer by the way, this is also important, because that's the opacity level that I want to start editing with. So now I have selected all of these layers, you can see the animation timeline here below. If you don't see it, you can press this button here. And to duplicate this layer, I'm just gonna hit this plus sign here. And this duplicates also all of these layers. And this doesn't take much space if you remember that this is a tiny 160-144 pixel image. So this is really easy for your iPad still to do. And then just make as many frames that you need for your animation. And then when you play them back, you can see that they all have this same layer. And the reason why I selected the opacity of the lowest one is because now it's automatically selected in each one. And this is the time consuming part. If you want to go to edit, for example, this 61% one, you have to select it from every single one of your frames. So this is one of those features that takes a lot of time, but it just depends on where you want to waste your time. <laughs> Basically, both Procreate and Pixaki have huge time wasters still that I hope will be patched out later. One more thing about this Pixaki app that I think it's really good to be mindful of. If you're used to Procreate, Procreate has really good palm rejection. But if I were to, for example, adjust the lighting of this thing here, it can really easily create these sort of like pro pixels. So to avoid this, I recommend when you are working in Pixaki to work really zoomed in. At least then you will see if the pixel happens and then you will be able to fix it later. Because when you play back your animation and then you will see these like little dots, it gets really hard to hunt down those pixels. Okay, this animation looks like it's about done. So I'm gonna use this export option. And now with this magnification option here, you see that it allows me to render it in huge resolution. So I'm gonna use this and then share it as a GIF image, and I'm going to bring it to Procreate. Now we have, when we have the GIF imported into Procreate, you can see that it has all of these frames as their own layers. And the reason why I imported this to Procreate, because I want to use this animated MP4 format. And I think this is moving way too fast for me. I like the kind of like slower pace of the animation. I think it feels more relaxing. And now when I have the animated MP4 format, I can export it and use this animation on websites that don't support GIFs. Like for example, at this point, Instagram, you can't use a GIF format at all. So it's just handier to have it in video format. And once I have this in video format, I have taken this really quick loop into LumaFusion and created enough copies so that I have 20 seconds of animation and then I use that video to post on different social media feeds. So let's say that you want to make the entire animation in Procreate and there are benefits to using just Procreate because you get to use all those blending modes and color adjustments as part of the animation. So if you want to use Procreate and then you have your animation frames done, you don't have to collapse them like this, but if you have collapsed your animation frames, they will be just single frames of layers. And let's look at that animation. You can see a more in-depth animation work through in my other Procreate 5 video. I will put a card here. But let's say that this is your entire animation and now you want to export it. But if you look at the canvas size, you will see that it's tiny and if we export it, this will be a very blurry video. So we need to have that resolution. 
So how can we get around this? Let's take, for example, this one layer here. And I'm gonna turn off the animation assist for now, just to have more space. And let's make this into a bigger scale. So let's go to crop and resize. And we are not going to resample canvas, so keep that off. And when you are scaling pixel art, it's always important to scale to the power of 2. So for this, I'm just gonna multiply it by 10 and then just add a 0 at the end. So I'm gonna input here 100 and 600. And for this, I'm gonna have 144. 100 and 440. And the resulting image will be big, but this will stay in its original scale. And now I'm gonna hit done. And you can see that all of the frames are in the lower left corner. Now if we are to just to scale it to its uh, bigger scale, you will see that once we snap it and make sure that you have magnetics on, once we have it in this scale, it will no longer look like pixel art. It's just a blurry mess. So to get around this fact, let's make sure that we go to the transformation settings. And you can see that here it says by cupid. I will set this to nearest neighbor. And now when I have set it to nearest neighbor, I have magnetics on and uniform scale so that it doesn't scale it off balance. I'm just scaling it to the size of the screen. And the scaling will snap to the document bounds if you have magnetics on. So just look for that small snap. And then when you have it there, just hit the brush button and you can see that it has, it has maintained this crispiness of the pixel art. Now just do this to every single layer and you're done. And now when I think about this, this process doesn't take that much time. And the reason is that you can have multiple layers selected and you can apply the same selection transformation to all of them at once. Just make sure that you have nearest neighbor, uniform, and then snap it to bigger scale. And if you want to use Procreate for animation, this is just something that you will need to do to all of your layer groups that are those frames or layers, like in this instance, every layer is its own frame. And then when you export it, you can use the MP4 format straight out of the box. So Pixaki is not necessary for this. It's just if you like using that, that's an option to use. Just wanted to cover that. And also knowing this scaling trick is important for whatever type of art you do. Okay, so this is not that difficult. It's just another method to do the same thing. And then you just hit export and then you're done. I hope that this hasn't been too complicated and I have explained everything clearly enough. I certainly have tried my best. And I hope that you can create really cool pixel art animations and just experiment this cool format because it's really fun and super addictive. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And I hope I get to see all of your pixel creations. I'm Mikko and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!